Historically, several Egyptologists and scholars used racial terms including Negro to describe ancient Egyptians, Nubians and other ancient North Africans, reflecting the racial language of their time. Sir E. A. Wallace Budge, an influential British Egyptologist of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, referred to both Nubians and Egyptians as part of the Negro race in some of his works. In Egyptian language, 1910, Budge stated, The ancient Egyptians belonged to the dark-skinned races and must be considered closely related to the Negro races of Africa. Flinders Petrie in his 1939 book, The Making of Egypt, Petrie described pre-dynastic Egyptians with features he associated with negroid elements. The racial type, which was evolved and predominated in Egypt, shows a fair proportion of the negro element, mixed with other types. Champollion the Younger, Jean-Francois Champollion, known as the father of Egyptology, made notable observations of the people depicted in Egyptian tombs and artwork during his expedition to Egypt in the 1820s. He described the ancient Egyptians as black-skinned with frizzled hair in some of his writings. In his letters he noted, These Egyptians were true Negroes of the same species as all the natives of Africa. Count Constantin Francois de Volnay a French historian, philosopher, and politician made influential observations about ancient Egypt and the appearance of the ancient Egyptians during his travels in the late 18th century. In his work Travels in Syria and Egypt, Volney famously described the ancient Egyptians as having physical features associated with black Africans. His observations became some of the earliest European references to the African roots of ancient Egypt. Here's a well-known quote from Volney on this topic. The Copts are the proper representatives of the ancient Egyptians. They are of a melancholy, swarthy complexion, with a very moderate beard and thick lips, still retaining the resemblance to the African race from which they are descended. Additionally, in reflecting on the racial implications of these features in comparison to European depictions, he said, just think that this race of black men, today our slave and the object of our scorn, is the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. Anyone who tells you Egyptologists did not call Egyptians or North Africans Negro is only showing his ignorance about the subject.